Thanks, Pat. Um, Iraqi Prime Minister uh, Mohammed al uh, Sadani told the Wall Street Journal uh, that the U.S.-led military coalition that is in Iraq to fight ISIS uh, was no longer needed. He said, quote, we believe that the justifications for the international coalition have ended. Uh, Sadani didn't set a deadline for the departure of the co coalition, nor did he close the door, but he said he was no longer worried um, that the departure of the coalition would undermine Iraqi military capabilities. So what is the U.S. response? Um, you know, I'm not going to comment on the, the Iraqi, um, you know, uh, government's remarks other than to say U.S. forces are in Iraq at the invitation of the government of Iraq. We value uh, Iraq as a partner. We'll continue to consult closely with them. Uh, at this time, I'm not aware of any official request by the government of Iraq for DOD forces to depart. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Have there been requests for any uh, official talks? Talk about uh, well, party. as I highlighted uh, at the the last two press briefings, um, you know we continue to engage in conversations and communications with our Iraqi partners on U.S. force presence in Iraq as it relates to the safety and security of those forces. Um, but again, U.S. forces are there at the invitation of the government of Iraq, focused on the defeat ISIS mission. One and then more last question. On if the you try to ask it a different way, maybe I'll answer it a different <laughs> way. Well, yes. Uh, on the defeat ISIS mission, um, how would that be undermined by that presence? I mean, this is obviously an enduring uh, threat that you've had to, to deal with, uh, both on the ground, um, in the air. Uh, how would uh, U.S. national security possibly be undermined if U.S. forces could no longer operate in Iraq? Yeah, thanks, Chris. <clears throat> so I, I don't want to get into hypotheticals. Um, we know that ISIS continues to be a threat. The counter-ISIS campaign was largely successful uh, over the last 10 years in terms of muting the threat of ISIS as it relates to Iraq and Syria, in no lar large part, you know, in no small part rather, than to the professionalism of the Iraqi security forces as they have continued to increase their capability, uh, their skills, and their effectiveness. Uh, so, you know, credit where credit is due. That said, um, you know, we continue to see ISIS uh, as a international and a regional threat. Uh, and so we can't take our eye off the ball when it comes to ISIS. And that is the purpose of the defeat ISIS mission, to ensure the, defer the, the enduring defeat of ISIS. Ultimately, though, at the end of the day, again, we are in Iraq at the invitation of the government of Iraq, and we will continue to consult closely with this valued and important partner. Um, and I'll just leave it there. Yes, sir. On the same topic, what's your assessment on your personnel in Iraq? Do you think that do you need to be there for a longer time because ISIS is still a threat? Or what's your assessment on your presence? Well, your look, you know, the, the way that the United States conducts operations is in consultation with our allies and partners. That's exactly what we're doing in the Red Sea. Uh, and so we are there at the invitation of the government of Iraq. I mean, we've talked about this before, you know, but for the benefit of those who have not been following this, if you go back to, to uh, 2014, uh, when ISIS was on the outskirts of Baghdad, um, it was the United States, you know, working with partners in the region uh, to include Iraq, inviting U.S. forces to come and help uh, to uh, defeat and counter ISIS. Uh, and so, you know, we will continue to consult closely with our, our partners in the region and continue to work together to address regional uh, and international security threats that affect all of our security. And one question on the Iranian attacks on our bill. What's your assessment on that attacks? Because it was almost within a few miles away from your bases in our bill. And why you didn't use your anti-missile system, defense system, to repel some of these missiles that were attacking civilian areas? So as I understand it, uh, none of these strikes were targeting U.S. personnel or, or U.S. facilities. Uh, you've heard the Iraqi government respond. I'll, I'll refer you to that. My understanding is that these strikes were not precise, um, and you know, just leave it there. And, and I, I need to get to the other yeah, side of the room. Yeah, the 2020, 2024 National Defense Authorization Act includes a provision for equipment for Iraqi Kurdistan Peshmerga forces with air defense. Are you going to work on that? 
Um, again, I'm, I'm not going to get ahead of uh, pending legislation, you know, in terms of, um, yeah. So I, I don't want to get ahead of that, other than to say, again, Iraq is a valued and important partner, and we'll continue to work closely with Iraq when it comes to security, regional security, and, and Iraqi needs uh, for, from a defense standpoint, as we have for many years. But let me go ahead and get to the other side of the room.